The concatenate x function just looks like any other x function. But what makes this function really powerful is the ability to debug calculations and create really powerful calculations by concatenating texts with numbers and calculations and even toying around with context transitions. Maybe I'm just talking too much. You've got to see this. Let's start. All right, I'm in Power BI and let's just say a hello to the data model first. Simple data model, sales table connected with the products table and a calendar table. Nothing that fancy, a one-to-many relationship. I've already built a simple measure called total sales, which is nothing but the multiplication of the units into the price. And I've also made a visual on top of that, which is nothing but year, month and the total sales displayed. Now let's just say that somebody asks us a question that the entire sales for the month is about $1,200 What's the sale of the best selling product? Now, how do we get to that answer? Let's just do a bit of pivoting first and then we'll try to get to the answer. So I'm just gonna go ahead in my uh, tab right here. I will add the products as well. So I'll just say add data. I wanna add the name of the product as well right here and the product name has been added. If you just visually take a look at this, you will be able to see that the best selling product sold $270. And that's the number that I'm trying to chase. In the next month, the best selling product got us about $360. And that's again, the number that I'm trying to chase for that month. Now let's just remove the product because I do not really wanna take a look at buy the product. I only wanna take a look at the month. Here I have $1,200 and here I would wanna take a look at 270. That's a bad hand writing but and here I want to take a look at 359 that's what I want to take a look at how do we do such thing if you just recall what we just did to take a look at the number is that I summarized the month and the year by the product first and then I ran the total sales calculation and then I was able to take a look at the best selling product now we have to do the similar thing in DAX as well I've already written a measure for that I'm just going to show you real quick I'm creating a table using a top end function. If you don't really know what the top end function does, I suggest that you take a look at another video that I have done on top end function and that should help you out. But here is what I'm trying to do. I am trying to create a products table within the context of the month that I'm working in. And the products table is not going to hold all the products. It's just going to hold one product and the criteria for selection of the product is nothing but total sales. Once you get that particular table, which is just containing one particular product, that products table is going to go filter your sales table. And in the sales table, I am calculating my total sales and that is going to be summed up right here. So I'm just gonna saying that, hey, go inside this one row table, which is right here, and please calculate my total sales and just sum that up, as simple as that. Now, if you drag this calculation in your uh, pivot table right here, you're going to see the very number that we were trying to chase, which is 270, 359, so on and so forth. Good enough. If you show this to anybody, they're going to ask you a question. Okay, fine, $270, pretty nice and easy. What was that product that got you 270? Now, this time they're asking you the name of the product and we'll enhance the calculation a bit more rather than giving them one name of the best selling product, we'll give them three best selling products, like three product names concatenated by one another telling what were the three best selling products of that month. How do we build such a calculation? And that's where we're going to use the concatenate X. I'm gonna start creating another measure. So sales table, right click new measure, and I'm gonna say best product, and I'm gonna to start to use the same top end function. So I'm gonna say top end. Hey, I'm just looking at three products in the products table, and I'm gonna say that the order of selection of the three products is nothing but total sales. Now there might be an error that might happen in the products table. For a particular month, which has maybe got very less sales value, consider something like this. In the month, uh, the, just two products sold. So the first product got us $100, that's the top one selling product. The second product got us $20. But since we are asking for top three products, all the other products with zero sales are going to all tie up for the third position and our table is going to be polluted with products that have no sales. In order to avoid that, I'm going to maybe wrap this products table in the filter function and I'm going to say, hey, please get only those products where you have the total sales present. Now, you can write total sales not equal to blank or you can just write total sales. They mean the same thing. Anyways, I'm just writing shorter DAX. All right. This top end function at the moment is giving us three products with sales values 
but it's giving us a table. It's not really giving us the value, it's a table and we can't really fit a table inside of the cell. So we need to go inside of this particular table which has got perhaps three rows right here and in this products table, we need to capture the name of the product right here. Okay, how do we do that? I'm gonna use the function, something like concatenate x. Now, instead of summing the products, we are concatenating the names of the products. And I'm gonna say that, hey, this is the table that we have created. Why don't we go inside of this table and concatenate the name of the product, which is product product, that's the name of the product. And perhaps just maybe close the bracket for now. Let's just see what happens. Close the bracket, press enter, and let's just drag this function onto our pivot table. Let's just see what happens. Now, it, this is pretty good. Now, this is actually giving us the names of the three products, but they are so concatenated, like they're so tied up with one another that we don't really get to know that where is the delimiter, there's no space, there's nothing. So what do we do? We have to give some delimiter in between. So the concatenate x function, has got a delimiter option as well. After we have provided the table, the top end function, and the expression, which is what we would like to concatenate, we can also give the delimiter. So I'm here, I'm gonna maybe specify a delimiter, which is let's say an enter. So I can say something like a unicharacter 10, which is the code for enter. And if I do that, you can see that the product comes in three different rows. So row number one, row number two, row number three. This is nice. Now, if you take a look at this one, at the moment I'm taking a look at the three best selling products, but I don't really know what is the sales of these individual three best-selling products. So we need to not only concatenate the name, but the name along with the sales value. So we need to modify our concatenate function a bit. I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna start to write, hey, along with the name of the product, I also want you to concatenate the sales value of that. And I'm gonna maybe say an and here, and I'm gonna say, hey, concatenate the total sales. If I commit to the function at the moment, the product name and the sales is just going to be concatenated without any space. So we wanna format this a bit. So I'm gonna use the format function right here, and I'm gonna say, hey, why don't you format this with the space and let's say one decimal and also perhaps add a dollar sign at the start. I think that should be good. And let's just take a look at the results. Maybe we can also add a little pipe symbol to kind of differentiate that. And that is nothing but the sales of the product. This looks good. Now, I wanna also maybe do something more fancy. I want to also order these products in the descending order. That means the largest selling product should come first the second largest should come second and the third largest should come in the end. So we also have another option in the concatenate x function in the order in which you'd like to display the items. So I would like to display the items in the total sales order and the um, order should be a descending order. And these two inputs are the final two inputs. I press enter and I commit to this. Now the concatenate x function gives us the products in the correct order. This is nice. Let's just make this a slight bit more fancy. Alongside the sales that we have received, I also wanna find out that you are what percentage of the sales of the entire month. That means I would like to take $324 and divide that by $904. And that is gonna give me about 33% or so. So let's just do that. I'm gonna go ahead and declare a variable. And I will explain why am I doing that. But for now, let's just declare a variable, call that as total sales and I'm gonna maybe reference my total sales measure right here. Do a return statement right here to close the loop. And now I am going to create another calculation right here. And I'm gonna say that I am looking forward to divide two calculations, which is nothing but total sales, and divide that by my total sales, which is my variable, and close that uh, thing. I think it's like two similar names, so I can just maybe call this as TOT, sales and that should make a slight bit of difference in the variable and the measure name. All right, now the reason why I declared total sales as a variable outside the loop of the concatenate x, because as soon as you create this little table right here and you write the total sales within that, the context transition happens and the sales is calculated for that very product. But now I want to reference this product sales with the sales of the entire month. So I need to go outside the loop of the three products and then calculate the sales outside of that so that I can reference that within that to be able to do my divide calculation. All right, division has been done. Now this divide needs to be formatted as a percentage. So I can say, hey, something like a format, format this calculation in a percentage format and a single decimal should be good. I think that's good. And maybe I can have a little pipe lip, simple added at the start. 
I think that should be good and let's just commit to this and we even have the percentage added right here. And now that's pretty amazing and you can have these labels added or anything compared to the last year added and you can make this calculation as fancy as you would like. All right, just to give you some sense of the application of the concatenate X measure that we have created, how fancy could you make that and how could you use that within your dashboards? Please take a look at this example. So this is an old dashboard that I created for tracking the learning and development activities of an organization. And that little thing right here is nothing but the concatenate X measure. It shows us the five most expensive programs that one is doing. These are the names of the programs. This is the money that you're spending. This is the per employee cost. How many people did you train and how many people did you invite for that program? So what I've done is creatively combine a lot of things within Concatenate X to generate five most expensive programs that a company is doing. And I've also happened to kind of create a totals row in the end that what is the total of these five programs that we are seeing right here. And this is nothing but a simple uh, table visual right here with no dimensions, nothing of that, just cleaned up and placed right here. In case you were to select anything in the dashboard, so let's just say that I'm selecting B1 grade or a particular department or a division, then this entire dashboard is going to change and respect that filter and give you five most expensive programs for that. And you can go fancy and make such fancy calculations in your dashboards as well. All right, that's been it. I have done one more video on concatenate X to be able to create explainer calculations that you can add to tooltips a while ago in case you are interested in exploring concatenate X more. I highly recommend that you take a look at that video as well. In the end, a big shout out about my tax and my power query training courses. In case you are a beginner trying to make your mark in Power BI, learn the fundamentals first and then even move on to solving more difficult problems with power query, tax and data modeling. I will highly recommend that you take a look at my courses. It's going to be super awesome. If you have any questions around this one, please post a comment and I'll be glad to reply. Thanks so much for watching this and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Bye.